Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit and in this video we're going to be doing a review on the Winston Churchill Late Hour by Davidoff Cigars. Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. I'm CP. I'm Paul Anthony. And I'm Klaas Kellner. And Klaas is going to give us the rundown on the Davidoff Churchill The Late Hour. Please Klaas, take it away. What you guys are seeing is the Winston Churchill Late Hour, The Late Hour. This is part of the iconic lines of Davidoff and it basically is a blend that was made for the man himself, Winston Churchill. We are actually the only company that can make a cigar for the Churchill family and we started with the grandson Winston Churchill and now we are working with the great grandson Randolph Churchill. And this cigar is inspired by the late hour, by the time at night when Winston Churchill was always with his whiskey and always with his cigar. Mm -hmm. Those moments of deep thought, those moments of relaxation and those moments of intensity, mm -hmm. you know, because we all can imagine when he was smoking the cigar and what time of the of the era it was, right? Yeah, yeah. we can all have a very, very mm -hmm. picture, a romantic picture about that. Mm -hmm. We have a cigar here that is made out of seven different types of tobacco and it is essentially the same tobaccos that the original blend has. So we are looking at a wrapper from Ecuador. In this case, it is an Habano Oscuro. So we have made an effort to sort leaves that are darker, right? That it is from Ecuador. And then we have a binder from Mexico blended with five tobaccos in the filler that are comprised of pre-Dominican and two that are uh, Nicaraguan tobaccos, right? So we have already previously enjoyed the Winston Churchill original. Sure, so there's a, a link in the uh, description below for that uh, particular review, as well as an overarching uh, view on the Winston Churchill line by Davidoff, which is the two cigars mentioned, as well as the new 2019 Traveler limited edition release as well. Correct. And in that previous video we did, we were discussing that the original blend is a much milder blend, right? It's a much smoother and creamier blend. This is not the case. We have smoked already a little bit of the cigar and we can tell that the cigar has much more power, right? Mm, more character. More character. You're correct. The word power is a little... Deceptive. Yes, because we're not Ambiguous. talking about power, intensity, strength. We're talking about flavor. Mm. This is a much more aromatic, much more uh, complex blend in the palate. You feel a lot more going on. And even though it's exactly the same blend, there are two key distinct differences. And one of them is the position of the leaves that we are using in this blend. The original blend has tobaccos from the bottom of the plant. This blend that comes in three different Vitolas, the Robusto, the Toro, and the Churchill size, has tobaccos from the top of the plant, Visus and higher. Mm. This means that we're gonna get a cigar that is much more aromatic, much more flavorful. Tobaccos that are much more oilier, and it's probably gonna be a tobacco that you can even see it. it burns, thicker burn line, mm. and it doesn't burn as quick. This is as much, it, just in time, it might be a little longer just because of the tobaccos that we're using. Mm. Sure. And uh, I know that many guys out there um, really kind of uh, want to know what kind of tastes we may be getting from the cigar so we can maybe, you know, see what, you know, pre-light, initial light, first, second and third, uh, final third um, flavor profile we're, we're going to expect when smoking this particular cigar. This cigar starts off, as we can see, there's a lot of sweetness, mm. right? It even feels on the lips. It's a lot more intense, sweet. And then there's some spices that are already playing much early on in the blend in regards, in comparison with the, with the normal Winston Churchill uh, blend. You could also notice that the acidity is not as noble. Mm -hmm. There's a little, it's a little bit more precise. Yeah, right? The retrohale, I'm getting the, um, a little citrus mm -hmm. um, in there. Um, and I, I get quite a strong, like kind of leathery taste, you know, kind of a more oily leather, you mm -hmm. know, not that, you know, kind of, mm. uh, Shaul in the previous video was talking about maybe, you know, a suede lever, yeah, a lighter exactly. lever. I'm getting yeah. a way more, you know, um, it's like an aged, like a bridal yeah. lever. Yeah, you know, bridal like, lever, that's a good, that's a good, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's much more poignant. It's, it's more precise. The flavors are more distinct. 
It's not as balanced. I mean, it's still balanced, but it's, it's, you can feel every area being stimulated much more precisely, mm. right? Yeah. And we're, of course, dividing the palate into four. We have the, the sweet in the front, the salty in the, in the lateral front, the acid lateral back, and then you have the bitter towards the back. This is much more dark chocolate notes, mm. right? Uh, roasted nuts. More roasted nuts. It's not mm. just not simple nutty, but it's now roasted nutty. Um, more like a charred wood, mm. you know? And uh, if you smoke, if you smell the air, if you do the retrohale, you can feel much more pepper going on. Yeah. And it's not just about the position of the level in the leaf, mm. but the other key difference in this cigar is that one of the tobaccos, the Condega tobacco from Nicaragua, actually we age it in a whiskey barrel for six months. Mm. So if you smoke Condega on its own, right? If you're only t tasting that one ingredient mm. and it's simple, it's normal Condega by itself. Condega tends to stimulate in the center of the palate, which has a nice spice, but it's not a strong spice. And it's very balanced. But when you age Condega in a whiskey barrel for six months, there's a sort of fermentation that goes on in there, the temperature rises, and it, but it also absorbs the aromas from that whiskey barrel, from the woods, from the remains, uh, ar the, the remaining aroma aromas of the whiskey. And that Condega will increase in strength, one or two points, will also be sweeter and also spicier. So these are things, key, note, key differences from the original blend to this one. You're gonna see that this cigar is more flavorful, sweeter, spicier. Mm. Those are three main differences. On the sides, it's still very balanced, a little bit more, um, more intense, but really the, the big difference is in the center of the palate. If you draw a line right down the middle of your palate, you feel the front of the palate being stimulated more, the middle of the palate stimulated being more, and the back of the palate being stimulated more. Mm. So it's more, more Abano type stimulation, mm -hmm. right? And this is something that a lot of cigar aficionados enjoy. Sure. And uh, for me personally, I'm actually uh, just about finished my second box. I got the original uh, Churchill size, I got the Toro size. And the way that I personally enjoy the cigar frequently is after um, like a meal uh, with friends. Uh, there's a uh, the club I'm a member at in Philadelphia. Um, a lot of us retire to the cigar lounge and uh, I use it as a, a digestif with uh, you know a nice glass of uh, single malt scotch. Would that be something that you know you see is typical for people enjoying this cigar? Yeah, you're gonna probably want a spirit that um, has a higher level of alcohol content, mm. right? That can uh, not fight, but complement mm. uh, the intensity of the cigar. But also you're gonna be looking for a spirit that has the ability to uh, be spicy and also be sweet. So um, just like you're describing a malt whiskey or something like that, might actually be really good, a single malt. Um, and then if you're maybe in the American market, uh, bourbons. Mm. Bourbons good, would go very, very well with this because they have that sweetness from the corn and they have that spice. So you have uh, to look for a spirit that is more or less along those lines. Mm -hmm. And if it's in food, then you can start going into the steaks. Yeah, right. yeah, sure. And uh, we did a tour of uh, Brugal today here um, in Puerto Plata. Um, is there any particular Brugal that might pair well with this? I'm a fan of the 1888 with this one mm -hmm. or, or the Extra Viejo. Uh, yeah. If, uh, if you go for the sweeter Brugals, like uh, the XV or the Leyenda, those might pair a little better with the original. Uh, but you want a, a more traditional type of rum uh, that has the ability to uh, stimulate the back and also some spice. Okay. You know what I think would go really well with this? You know what I'm talking about, Paul, but you have yet. Maybe you've already tried it. Hatafia? Mm -mm. Oh, you yeah, haven't tried this, Hatafia? Yeah, I think this would be great. Next time I see you, I'll have to get you a bottle. It's, uh, basically, Send it my way. <laughs> it's basically uh, the must leftovers from the champagne because uh, you can only press the grapes very lightly. It's then used to make this uh, very, very sweet, but very rich in, um, in alcohol uh, mm. liqueur. I think you'd enjoy that with this. So it's, it's taking the, the remains, mm. the, the, the skin, right? The skin, where, yeah. Where the, all, yeah, the, the, the teeth, all the tannins and yeah, everything. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, it would be a lot more powerful mm. uh, drink mm. than a champagne. Yeah, exactly. we mentioned that champagne mm. would probably go well with the original blend. Um, and, and when was this blend actually released? 
this plan was released uh, not too long ago, actually in 2017. Okay. And uh, it's been a hit. Uh, there is just so much tobacco that we can age mm. in, uh, in whiskey barrels. So we have enough whiskey barrels, but the demand uh, has surpassed our expectations. It's, um, everybody's asking for the cigar. It is something unique. It's something very different uh, in the Davidoff portfolio. And it's for the first time ever that we are using whiskey barrels mm. uh, for a blend. So, and obviously it goes hand in hand with the theme. Winston Churchill, at late at night, with a cigar and a whiskey. Sure. And uh, in another video series, we looked at the uh, discovery pillar of, uh, of cigars, so the Yamasar, the Escurio, and the uh, Nicaraguan brand. Um, would you say that this is uh, one of the um, most full-bodied cigars in the Davidoff lineup, or is it in kind of line with the Nicaraguan and um, Yamasar blends? This is gonna be more, more in line around, around the same level of intensity. Yeah, so different flavors of, uh, flavor profiles, very different. Where Yamasa is gonna be more sweet and spiced with some earthy, and uh, <clears throat> Nicaragua is gonna be a very lineal, uh, typical Nicaraguan, Habano type blend. Uh, this is gonna be a much more complex, uh, all over the palate blend, uh, because you're using so many different varieties in so many different countries. So uh, all these countries coming together create a much more balance in the palate at that intensity level. Sure. Okay. Any other questions there, Charles? I think this has been pretty informative. Well, seeing as the sun is going right down right now, I think it's time for us to sit back and enjoy this and watch the late hour come. Yeah, definitely. And uh, definitely keep a watch out. We've got the uh, 2019 limited edition review coming up, which again, if this is already starting to get us towards that traveling mentality, I'm really interested to, uh, to try that blend as well. So check out the description below for that link. If you like this video, please press that like button, subscribe to the channel for the upcoming video content that we've been filming here in the beautiful Dominican Republic for the last four or five days, where Klaus has been very generous with his time, showing us around the farms and the factory that Davidoff owned here. And uh, leave any comments and questions that you may have about this particular blend or any other cigar-related questions you may have. With all of that being said, my name's Paul Anthony. I'm CP. And I'm Klaus Kellner. I'll catch you next time. Take care. Cheers. Well, Charles Philippe and I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please also check out the full length documentary of how Davidoff makes cigars. And down here, there's a full playlist of our whole Dominican experience.